Greetings, friend. I will show you how I solved this puzzle from round seven of the Sudoku Grand Prix. And I won't be placing any marks in grid. Click on the link below if you want to try this puzzle yourself. And with that, it's solving time. So this is puzzle two, still relatively easy. And the focus is right here in block three. So you see how there's a one and a one right here. And you put a one right there. Well, you'll notice uh, the way this puzzle is made, two, three, five, seven, there's just a lot of restrictions coming into this. So like, where can an eight go? You know, an eight's gotta be right here. And then if you look, well, this has gotta be a four. And then this has gotta be a six, and that's gotta be a nine. And so I remember solving this pretty quickly, feeling good about myself. Uh, like I said in my previous video, I didn't do so hot on puzzle one. Like it took me over 10 minutes. And so I felt like I was a little bit lost. And so I wanted to regain some momentum right here with puzzle two. Uh, and in case you're wondering, you can do any round, like I d never did rounds one through six, but I went with round seven. Uh, and the format is such that you sign up and then once you start, basically you have an online timer. It gives you the puzzle pack and then you look through the puzzles, you, you, sign, you fill them out on paper. So I print them out, did it all on paper, and then you input certain uh, rows uh, the answers and then do that within the time of an hour and a half hour and a half to do 14 puzzles like i said in previous video i only got five of them done and correct uh, so it was quite the humbling learning experience for me but it was really fun and i hope to do more with that so let's look at the two so you have two come across row one and a two come up column four so now these twos are like a pointing pair right a two has to be in one of these spots in block two in, in row column five so the two can't be here you have this two come across so this has to be uh, two, and so you can mark that. Uh, the other things to look at here, you know, it's like I filled this part in. You really want to look at the spots where there's just a lot of of numbers already. You know, a lot of digits, kind of creating those restrictions, right? So kind of like you see how this three comes up and three comes over, sort of solve three. So I, I you want to focus at the top and kind of in the middle and then work your way down. There's no point in trying to fill out these cells where there's not a lot of information yet. And if we keep going across here, what do we need? A two and a six, we can't do the two and the six. I won't be placing any marks in the grid uh, just to show that this puzzle is relatively easy. It, as in strategy-wise, you only need naked hidden singles to get through the whole thing. All right, four, four, four is there, nice. And so now at this point, it's like, okay, what am I looking for here? Again, you kind of go to the cross hatching. Is there something I can do cross hatching wise? If not, look for a naked single, right? So the cross here, you're looking for, uh, you know, two, three, seven in row three. Can't solve the two, three, seven just yet. And then you have the eight and the three coming up, eight. So three here and three here means that this has to be a three. And so just, again, still trying to just create a bunch of restrictions here uh, where you see quite a few digits. And because of this three, now let's look at column seven. Where can a three go here, right? Can't go row five or row nine. So we can solve this for three, which means a five seven is remaining there. But that does help us out quite a bit. And so what's kind of neat is you go over here, you gotta switch over to naked singles now. So let's look here, because of this three, What's across this way? One, two, six, eight. And we have a three, five, seven. So this has to be a four, right? It's the only digit that has been filled in. And now we can solve this for four because of the four up here in column four. And so I, I find this fascinating, a switching. You can't just cross hatch. You have to usually go back to naked singles and, and not easy naked singles. These are ones where there's only maybe five or six givens in a row. And you gotta kind of look at the rest. So in this case, you have to look at the column and uh, the block to figure out that's where you need to solve next. So then coming back here, we solve this for a four when we miss it, a three, five, seven. Uh, you can notice two things. One, you got the three, five here, so that's a seven. Then you also have this five here, so that's where your five's gonna be and that's where your three is gonna be. And so now, you know, kind of fill out that whole row. And, and I've seen this too, uh, the competitors, the really the, you know, good competitors will be able to kind of put these clumps in and so they solve pretty quick with the clumps and really you know, get themselves moving a lot further in the puzzle. So now you can see this is like a six, nine. So what's remaining here would be a five, 
and a seven. So I thought maybe it was a five seven there you could solve, but I didn't I didn't see that you know, at this point. And again, I'm just kind of going off a of rough memory and also helping you you know show where you would want to look if you were trying to solve this particular puzzle. And so as you stretch this out, now we're going to put more pressure back up here because we're working at three going block one. You can only go right there. And so now we have. You see, there's the seven, so this has got to be where your seven is, that where your two has to be, because we talked about this being a two, three, seven, right? Uh, which now helps us out so we can solve this for seven. And so we have a naked triple up here, right? And what are those three digits going to be? I can tell you, though, we're not going to be able to solve uh, that naked triple just yet, but this would be a four, six, eight. Um, but you know, it's probably better just to solve this full house first. So we come back here and go, okay, well, we still need to get that six in there. So we have the six, great. And then this is gonna make a triple. And this is probably more likely we'll get a solve in because there's so many more digits down here that feed into it, right? So we have a one, two, three, four. So we're looking for five, seven, nine. There's five, seven. Uh, so we can't quite solve that yet either, right? I mean, we know this has got to be a six or a nine. Okay. So, uh, what did we create here though? You can see there's now only one, five, nine, and so the one is up here in row one and row eight, so this now, this has to be a one, which is a good solve for us. And now the ones are pointing pair down here. You can see this one coming down column one. That means a one cannot be here, and we see these ones, so this has to be a one right there. And so we kind of do a little cross hatching action and we were able to solve another one. Great. So we kind of shift gears here and it looks like what else can we do? Uh, something you can notice is see how this nine cuts across. We know a nine's in one of these two spots. So this can't be a nine. So now these nine, this is a pointing pair of nines. They're restricted to row eight here in block eight. And so now, so we got nine cutting across these nines and we got these two nines. So we can actually solve this for a nine right now. Pretty cool, huh? Uh, I love how this puzzle, you know, kind of challenges and keeps changing what I need to look for. And so what are the two digits remaining here? We need a five and a nine, which we can't solve yet. And this, we need seven, eight, nine, which we can't solve yet either. And so let's shift gears. Let's look at this five, how it cuts across, five coming down. So then this has got to be your five. And so now we can solve that for seven. Remember that was a five, seven. There. And so you're always kind of shifting and moving and shifting and seeing where else can we uh, do another solve. And we don't have that many sevens in, but since this seven cuts across and this seven comes down here, we know seven's down pointing pair. It has to be one of these two spots. So this seven with this seven means we can actually solve that for a seven now. And then we can finish off with the five and the nine because of that five right there. Nice, huh? All right, and so now we can come down here and finish this full house. So there's only one cell remaining. If you don't want to talk about full houses and doing the single cell, I'll put a link to my single cell solving video. Check it out. I show how best to look for naked and hidden singles in puzzles like this. All right, so what do we, and we know we're going to be able to solve this cell right here because these two are part of, you know, this, it'll be a naked pair for column six. So what would this would have to be is be a seven and an eight. So in this can't be a seven or an eight, it's gotta be your five. The other way to see it is if you saw these two fives, you could also solve that for five. But basically I knew I could solve this cell somehow. It all depends on what you're looking at at the time. And so now, you know, let's look up here. We're starting to fill in row five, uh, six, seven, and nine. The sevens can't be near those two spots. So this has to be your seven. We knew that's a six, nine. And the six is right here. So that's actually gonna be your nine. This will be your six, that will be your nine. Great. And so you immediately want to pivot and go over to, okay, where's my restrictions at now? And how can I take advantage of what I just placed in here? Well, we're missing a two and we're missing two and a seven. So there's your seven, there's your two. Great, and now we have two naked triples coming down here. We have some cells over here. So we're actually, you know, at the point where we're starting to make some more progress and might get to solve some of these. So let's look at this first one. We got, you know, one, two, four, five, seven, nine. So we're looking for three, six, eight. So there's a three and a six. So this is a naked single eight. That would be a three, six. Can't solve that yet. And then I'd look over 
you know, what can I do with this eight? Nothing really yet. But what I notice is where the, you know, ones, it's a one, two, four down here. That can't be a one and that can't be a one. So here's your one. And so now you're, and then you see the two. So that's gotta be your four. And there's your two. Great, so then we already have solved that. What's remaining here? And we're looking for a four and five. There's your four. So you go for the four and there's your five. And now immediately since I solve this five, I'm gonna look and say, okay, what can I do with this five? Five, five, these two fives, this has to be your five. And so I, you're always pivoting and kind of switching back to the cross hatching as soon as I get a chance, because that'll probably be our best chance and get some solved this puzzle. And so now I'll look at these ones and though that has to be a one. And what's remaining here, a four to six, I can see the four down in column one. So that's your four, that's your six. Great. And now, you know, we've created some more restriction here. And what's up here? Remember, we said this is a four, six, eight. Well, I got that four and an eight right now. That's your six. And we have the four in column one array. So there's going to be your four and that's going to be your eight. And so I can play off of this and go, okay, eight, and eight and six and six. So this is gonna be a six, eight. Uh, so let's finish off this full house first. So that'd be your three. And so three and a three, this is gonna be your three, that'll be your six. And then six and a six and this six. Now we can solve the six and the eight and come back over here and solve that for the eight and get that seven in, which we put in a long time ago. And I immediately go back to seven because it's easier to stick with the same digits if you can. And then what's remaining here, it's a two. If you want to see more cool solving like this, check out some of these other videos from the Sudoku Grand Prix. Don't forget to buy me a coffee link. Thank you so much for watching.